we do best practice benchmarking studies and collect data in five different disciplines, the most popular for our organization is knowledge management, and we've been the leading authority on knowledge management research for a really long time. McKinsey said, here's the seven technologies that will play a big role in the future of artificial intelligence. You probably recognize most of them. AGI is one that's not talked about a lot yet. That's really that component that is, I will say, it's supposed to be the closest to rivaling human intelligence. And according to researchers, it's still decades away. So something to keep your eye on in the future. Right now, I think we're all thinking about generative AI because that's the thing that hit the airwaves a couple of years ago. Something to keep an eye on from a knowledge management perspective, we're always looking at trying to reduce the time our knowledge workers look, uh, spend looking for information. It's always about identifying and mapping and prioritizing what's the most critical knowledge in the organization because that's where we're gonna focus our attention with our tools, our content strategies, and so on. But this year, popping at number two for the first time is that concept of incorporating AI and generative AI. I think you can see there's about 43% of people are at least moderately invested, if not very or extremely invested in AI. And some are just getting started and some haven't started at all. We want accurate information to help us make better and faster decisions. And the last two, as a knowledge management person, I really love because we can use some of these capabilities to help improve our content management strategies, which a lot of times we have a hard time getting people's attention around, getting them to pay attention to this. So how can we leverage AI to help us with those content and taxonomy strategies that we, we are working on? And then finally, that information management quality component is very important. Ultimately, the goal of knowledge management is to ensure that knowledge is actually transferred to the person who needs it in the moment they need it. If you see where the wheel starts with create, there's knowledge that's created. Someone's got something that they know and experience, right? They've got that knowledge. We identify that as valuable or unique. Then we say, we need to write that down. We need to collect that. We need to put that in this system. We need to share it with other people. So we review it. We validate that it's, it's, it's something that's important to our organization. And then we begin the sharing process. The use that's on this circle is highlighted blue because there's no value in this process until someone has actually grabbed that information for themselves and applied it, again, in the work that they do every single day, in their teachable moment. This is a model that was created, I think it was in the mid-90s by Nunaka. It's, um, I've got the source down below. And it's called the Seki model. A lot of people have probably seen it, S-E-C-I. But it shows you how tacit knowledge and explicit knowledge can kind of work together to create that cycle of knowledge flow that we're really shooting for. The other thing that a lot of our organizations are doing as it relates to, the, to AI is that they're becoming that, um, that change manager, that human component, right, for, for AI. They're helping to educate the workforce on what it is and what it's not. So when we ask um, in our priorities survey what's important for the user experience to be effective, the top three things were simplified, not a, not a surprise there, right? We want to make the user experience less confusing, more intuitive, all of that. We want it in the flow, right? In the flow was the number one, meaning it needs to show up in our work applications and our processes, not something extra outside of, I don't want to leave what I'm doing to go find something else. So what we're finding in our research and with a lot of the companies that we work with is those organizations that do really focus on the role of the expert in the organization have the highest level of knowledge management maturity in their organizations. What can experts do then to help us harness AI? And you guys are probably already doing a lot of this, but they can help train the machines, right? They're the ones that have the expertise. The IT guys are creating the systems. Have them help you make those machines, that machine learning work more effectively. They have the knowledge that you need. Talked about what Experts can do, now what can KM do? And we've talked about all of this already, right? Partnering with the business and preparing the culture. But don't forget to apply the foundational knowledge management that you've already been working on for how many years? Artificial intelligence can really sing amazingly when it's combined with the other AI, which I like to call appreciative inquiry, and that's that human side. And when you combine that component, the human side, with the actual technology side of AI, you get 
a third AI. You get amazing insights, right? So finally, just to say, remember what you're doing knowledge management, you're doing AI, and you're building your strategies, it's the knowledge that drives all of this. This is why we do this. People systems make technology systems work. Knowledge transfer that we talked about, it's a human thing, it's a cultural thing. Knowledge management is a human thing, it's a cultural thing. It's the how we help knowledge to move through the organization, it's still human focused.